Next speaker is Dr. Shravya Talapuredi, and uh, she is MBBS, OBG, FNB, uh, Reproductive Medicine, Senior Fertility Consultant, 39 Fertility Center, Sikindrabad, FNB, Reproductive Medicine, Milan, Bangalore, MS, OBG, Government Medical College, Vijayawada, MBBS, Usmania Medical College, Hyderabad, Academic in Charge, IMA, Short Term and Fellowship Courses, 39, Member, ISAR, IFS, and FOXY, uh, Dr. Purnima, Natkarni Best Paper Award in ISAR 2019, New Vision 2019, ISAR 2020, Conductor and Coordinated Advanced ART and Basic Fertility Courses for Clinicians from various countries, and uh, Areas of Interest, Recurrent Implantation Failures and PCOS. You find it boring, but yes, we need to know much about law, especially for ART practice in the era of current litigation. So, infertility, according to Ernst & Young survey done in 2015, eight years ago, around 23 million people suffer from infertility in India. So, to regulate the ART practice, the government, along with many professional bodies, has been uh, putting tremendous efforts. And the fruit of this tremendous efforts over 20 years is that we have a law, finally. On 20th December 2021, the go government of India released a gazette notification regarding the ART Regulation Act. On 26 December, we were given out a surrogacy regulation act. And to guide us in this regulation acts, we have been given ART rules and surrogacy rules in the month of June 2022. So what does the law say? We'll understand the law through a different case scenarios. So here is our first case scenario. Mrs. X, aged 25 years, is married to Mr. Y, aged 27 years. And the couple are trying to conceive since the past two years. She is a case of polycystic ov ovarian syndrome. So we are planning to give her ovulation induction. So does your clinic require ART registration? So the law states that what is ART? So ART, according to law, is defined as any attempt to obtain a pregnancy by handling sperm or oocyte outside the human body and transferring the embryos or the gametes into the reproductive system of a woman. So any clinic which handles this procedure is called ART clinic. So according to this law, for simple ovulation induction, you need not have a ART registration. So if you are planning for IUI or IVF or other ART services, definitely your clinic requires ART registration. So what are the authorities that regulate ART? We have a national ART board, state ART board, and also national ART and surrogacy uh, registry, and also the appropriate authorities. So where do you register your clinic? We have a website, artsurrogacy.gov.in. So you can log into the website, and the registration process is fairly simple. You fill out a form, a form one, wherein you apply for registration and the, your clinic premises will be inspected and you will be given a certificate of registration in the form of Form 3. So your registration is valid for a period of five years and every application for registration should be accompanied by an application fee of 50,000 for level one and two lakhs for level two clinic. So moving on to the next scenario. We have a 26-year-old PCOS. She was hyperstimulated on ovulation induction with gonadotropins. And Dr. X has a certified level one clinic, but he also has an IVF setup. So he's planning to convert his IUI to IVF. So can he do it? So what are the levels of clinics according to ART law? We have level one clinic wherein IUI is done, level two clinic where we can do surgical retrieval of gametes, handle oocytes outside the body, IVF ICSI, that is fertilization of gametes, embryo transfer, and cryopreservation of gametes or embryos. So what is level one ART clinic? The mandatory staff requirement is just one minimal gynecologist, gynecologist with a postgraduate degree in obstetrics and gynecology, and the minimum equipment required is a microscope, centrifuge, and a refrigerator. Level two clinic, yes, you need a team, a multidisciplinary team of gynecologist, andrologist, embryologist, counselor, anesthetist, and a director. I would not be going much into the equipment because it was already dealt with in the IVF lab setup. Moving on to the next case scenario. A couple, 40-year-old lady and 56-year-old gentleman approached to you for fertility treatment. They quote regarding a case which happened few years back when a 70-year-old lady delivered. All of us have seen it in news. So they ask, why can't we go? Can we go ahead? What do you say? 
Earlier, there was no law. We had only ICMR guidelines regulating our practice. So ICMR guidelines, established guidelines, will help us in ethical practice. But law is different from guideline. Law mandates that if you cross the law, you will be punished. So according to the current ART law, we can provide ART services to a couple or a woman who is between 21 to 50 years and a man between 21 to 55 years. So what are the other duties of ART clinics and banks? The clinics shall provide professional counseling. They shall ensure confidentiality of the couple or the women, uh, except in cases where you have to give out the data to national registry and also in case of medical emergency on application from the couple or on a legal notice. The clinic should maintain a grievance cell, provide ART services uh, to the age group mentioned above and also provide discharge certificate for all the procedures done at your clinic. Moving on to the next case scenario, we have a couple who are both O positive blood group, they took treatment, uh, IUI with husband sperm five years ago. But now they have filed a case against you for placing a wrong gametes as the child has O negative group. Now the court has ordered you to provide the case history. So what are the regulations regarding maintenance of records? According to the ART law, we have to maintain records for a period of 10 years duration. And these records, in case your clinic closes before that time or beyond 10 years, should be transferred to the National Registry. So when we talk about records, what are the things? One, we have to give information to the patient regarding all the procedures done at your clinic and even before the treatment starts. When you look at it, you have to start off with the procedure, what is the limitation, what are the charges, what is the success rate, side effects, availability of counseling, what is the rights of unborn child, and you need to maintain registers at your clinic. So regarding the consents and documentation, consent is a cornerstone for our practice. Informed and written consent should be taken prior to the starting of procedure in a language the couple can understand. And proper documentation explaining the risks, success rates, alternate procedures available should be maintained and also progress notes also should be maintained. So these are the forms for a level one clinic that should be available. Form seven is regarding the IUI consent with husband sperm. Form eight, IUI with a donor sperm. Moving on to the next case scenario, we have uh, Mrs. Sonu. She is para 2 live 2. She had pre previous cesarean sections, both female child. She approaches you for ART with a desire to get a male child. She argues that all the celebrities have male children to ART. Why not for me? What do you explain to her? The ART services are covered, are subject to provisions of the pcp Act. So we should not knowingly provide, prescribe, or administer anything that shall ensure or increase the probability of an embryo that shall be of a particular sex. Sex-selective ART is punishable under law, current ART Act, with a imprisonment of five to 10 years or five, uh, 10 to 25 lakhs or both. Moving on to the next case scenario, we have Miss Ria, 21-year-old lady. She wants to donate eggs to her sister. She has, her sister has a premature ovarian failure, but Miss Ria is unmarried. She wants to donate eggs before her marriage and is ready to sign any document to avoid legal complications. So would you consider Miss Ria? What are the regulations with regard to donors and ART banks? All the donors must be sourced from an ART bank. So if someone is willing to donate, they should come through the ART bank. And what is the age criteria? Males for sperm donation between 21 to 55 years, women for oocyte donation between 23 to 35 years. So sadly, we cannot take Ms. Rhea. Sperm or oocyte of a single donor should be allotted to only one couple. And oocyte donor can, be give, can give oocytes only once in a lifetime, and we can retrieve only seven oocytes in one stimulation. Moving on to the next case scenario, we have uh, Sonia and Rakesh who have been married for five years. Sonia has primary ovarian insufficiency and Mullerian agenesis. So the couple's parents are insisting for an heir. So what do you advise? Ideally, in this scenario, the lady has no eggs, no uterus but the man has sperm. So ideally, you would probably advise a donor egg and a husband's sperm with a surrogacy. Can we do it? So womb on rent. Probably we need to get sensitized regarding this issue. So surrogacy requirements for the couple. 
For the couple, we have a certificate of essentiality and a certificate of eligibility. So certificate of essentiality is related to certificate from the district medical board regarding their proven infertility, order of parentage and custody of the child passed by the magistrate court, and also insurance coverage for a duration of 36 months. Certificate of eligibility is an Indian citizen married, a uh, five years clause has been removed in the current surrogacy act, wife aged 23 to 50, husband aged 26 to 55, and they should not have any surviving child with a few exceptions being the child has a fatal disease or child is disabled for life. And they should not have a surviving child, be it adopted through surrogacy or through any way. So what are the requirements for a surrogate mother? Surrogate mother is someone who is a willing woman, married, with a child of her own, and age group between 25 to 35 years. She should have a certificate of medical psychological fitness, but she cannot provide gametes of her own, and only once in a lifetime. And regarding the case that we have discussed now, there is a new amendment which was given on March 14th, which states that couple undergoing surrogacy must have both gametes from the intending couple, and donor gametes are not allowed. So a single woman in the exceptional scenario is being single woman who is a widow or a divorcee undergoing surrogacy must use self eggs and donor sperms to avail surrogacy procedure. So sadly, this case we cannot advise her any option except for adoption. Right now, many people are approaching the Indian courts regarding this issue. Probably we will have future clarity in the coming years to come. So regarding the offenses and penalties, we have been telling law, so what are the offense, what is the penalty? Offenses could be anything from sex selective ART to sale of gametes to uh, uh, you know, uh, misuse of gametes. So the first contravention would be a fine of five to 10 lakhs, but the subsequent contra uh, contravention you will have a fine of 10 to 20 lakhs and imprisonment of three to eight years. So I will end my talk with a saying from Plato, laws of Laws are of no use because good people do not need laws while bad people will find a way around laws. So one needs to be true to our own conscience and take the right decision. Thank you.